Bob Lawley, uh, class of 66. I began in uh, the fall of 1962, and right at the outset was welcomed in by the cross country team, which were, you know, uh, pretty much populated with older and upperclassmen, and that made me feel very at home. And, very comfortable to sort of have that under my belt on the rest of the uh, campus that filled the students. And why did you choose to attend to come to Portland and uh, your undergraduate degree? Mm -hmm. uh, my undergraduate degree at Portland was in secondary social studies and, with an, and shared uh, that with uh, a number of others. And the reason probably I ended up deciding that Portland is that my father had been a graduate of Portland many years before that, uh, but I had uh, been interested in uh, competing and running in, in other places, and I knew that uh, Cortland would give me the opportunity to pursue that running career in almost any direction I would choose to go. And that uh, did prove to, to be that uh, later on. So Bob, what professors or teachers might have influenced you to a great degree here? Um, certainly in the history department, the uh, rather renowned uh, Ralph Brown, longer as a part of the program, and uh, Ellis Johnson, who has unfortunately uh, passed away uh, not too many years ago, but uh, I recall uh, very fond memories of walking across the campus with uh, Dr. Johnson, and uh, he and I would just uh, chit-chat about uh, different things that uh, seemed very far off the wall, and occasionally they would even come up in the classroom. and. He would look my way and nod my way as something that he and I had connected on in these cross-campus walks as we were either heading to a class or coming from one. And, uh, those were great memories uh, of the non-classroom or the non-competition uh, environment. You were obviously going to talk a little bit about your sports involvement in the Well, as I mentioned, it uh, started right in the, uh, before even the freshman year of freshman orientation training uh, before the other students came on campus and uh, pretty much uh, followed through in uh, what is unknown to those today, a field house that uh, had uh, only a dirt floor and we used to rake it uh, with Don Sazma, a coach, and uh, uh, try to clear away the rocks and the dirt and the debris. And, uh, there were many occasions in the winter when we would go in there and there would be, of course, no heat inside this. Uh, so there wasn't much difference between training inside the field house and being outdoors, uh, but there'd be this uh, layer of fog inside the field house that would uh, hover about uh, 20 feet up off the floor. <laughs> and it didn't know if it's going to rain on you, and sometimes it actually did <laughs> being inside it, which is a far cry from what the facility is today, and that's true of uh, pretty much the entire campus. So I did compete in uh, cross country and indoor track and outdoor track and uh, did not uh, follow through partly because of academics and so on uh, my junior and senior year in the track program. Uh, but uh, certainly I uh, stayed with the cross country all four years and uh, delighted in the uh, members of the team and the coaches and Dave Costa, the coach, uh, is one of the people that's going to be here tonight. And he and his wife have come from Indiana. Oh, any other questions? Sure, after you, you graduated, right. how prepared did you feel you were for your first professional job and what was that? Uh, I certainly felt between the courses of study and the student teaching experiences that, uh, and all of the uh, experience with the athletics here that I was very equipped to go into a, uh, any school district. I did find an interview with places as far away as Hawaii because they were looking for people. This was a time period when jobs were plentiful and you could kind of pick and choose, but I ended up uh, uh, with some various connections uh, that uh, my father knew somebody here, an athletic director. My father was previously an athletic director and he knew somebody and he said, you know, see what, what comes up there, give it a try and see if you like it. And 35 years later, I retired from North Syracuse uh, where I taught uh, to begin with only in the junior high for a couple of years and then moved right into a new high school that opened in 1969 and uh, stayed in the same facility in high school uh, until my retirement two years ago. But I felt that uh, Cortland very much prepared me in, in 
every area and every walk of uh, the career, and it was um, a great way to start uh, to go out into the, to the world of earning a living and raising a family and enjoying the life that has been as great as it is. Are there lifelong lessons that you felt you gained here that apply to your personal and professional life? Um, I, certainly all the experience of college is a lesson in its own right, but I believe that uh, specifically that, uh, that blending, that uh, uh, joining together of uh, the academics and the uh, um, sports and the campus setting uh, there were many that I was on teams with that were uh, phys ed majors or in, in connected with it because many of them, and I believe they still are, required to be part of some sports program. And uh, that uh, was a, a different connection uh, to the sports teams as well as the uh, fraternity houses because uh, being in the sports, I always was able to welcome to Wunda Beta, even though I wasn't a member of it, and, uh, and enjoy other activities on the campus, but I do feel that uh, in all, all those different angles, I was uh, very much prepared and, and uh, felt very comfortable moving into a, a job. Um, the last thing that you asked me to speak about was the unusual situation of the fact that my father was inducted into the Corporate Hall of Fame in 1987. He is a uh, 1933 graduate of Cortland and then went on to do number of other things in the Binghamton area, in the schools, uh, athletic director, guidance counselor, and he at one time uh, headed the New York State uh, Softball Association and um, was uh, duly recognized for that when he was inducted in 1987. So um, this was a dream he had, and having me become a part of this, and here it is today, and it's uh, wonderful to have this opportunity to be honored this way. Bob, you have a fondest memory of Portland? Oh, I don't know. I guess it's uh, not any one single thing, but uh, probably more than any uh, singular outstanding event or moment, um, it would be that all the various opportunities that Cortland afforded me to broaden my horizons. Uh, I recall that uh, one spring day uh, I was going to go to the NCAAs down in Virginia the Eastern Regionals, and uh, Coach Dave Miller walked up to me and he said, uh, oh, we got some other things going on, here's your airplane ticket and here's a hundred dollar bill. I'd never even seen a hundred dollar bill. He says, I think you'll find your way there and back. <laughs> and so I uh, headed off to Virginia with uh, a stress fracture in my tibia, no less, and uh, went down there and competed in the Eastern Regionals uh, all by my lonesome. And the more bizarre part of that whole thing, it happened to be the same weekend that Daylight Savings Time was being enacted and, or switching over to that, and uh, Virginia doesn't do that. So <laughs> here it was in two different, uh, in a sense, time zones that uh, where one was switching to Daylight Savings Time and the other was not. But it all came out in the wash, and uh, I uh, had to go back after that and go out of commission for a while because of the stress fracture and didn't run for about two, three months. <laughs> But uh, those are just, and there's many other memories too, right? And I appreciate your opportunity to give me the comment on these things and 